Let's go. Low Res Alright guys, I hate ads and you hate ads, so let's keep this under 10 seconds. Support Low Res Wonder Bread on Patreon and help us create brand new films, video essays, and series. Patreon.com slash Low Res. The script is just kind of a blueprint and sort of impressionistic, and it's like, okay, here's some pieces, let's have some fun. And when I'm writing, I really try to imagine as if I'm watching the movie for the first time. And I'm sitting there in my living room or in a movie theater by myself, not disturbing anybody, I'm talking to the screen, or I'm trying to really sort of uh, live in the moment as it's happening and sort of, you know, and really just key in on the details that are really going to pop out, I think, for an audience. When I received the 2016 Gary Dauberman revision of Kerry Fukunaga and Chase Palmer's It, I had fairly low expectations that any of the content found in the original two scripts would be dramatically altered. Word on the street had been that Dauberman merged the best elements of the two scripts together, reverted a couple of character names, and then threw his signature on the front page. But now, having read the Dauberman revision, I can honestly say that this draft sleep was as drastic as the last in terms of shaping the script. It is true that Gary Dauberman retained many of the elements found in Fukunaga's initial two runs, but the tone, the writing, and the overall influence had taken a sharp turn in another direction. Fukunaga's scripts, especially the 2015 rendition which found Richie Goldfarb as a young Jewish bisexual and Stan Uris as a goldfish, felt like their own stories. They belonged to Fukunaga and Palmer and no one else. Gary Dauberman, on the other hand, rewrote the script with a peripheral vision for the versions of it that had come before. The first page following the title features a quote from the original It miniseries. I am the worst dream come true. I'm everything you ever were afraid of. And the entire script is littered with nods toward that 1990 made-for-TV movie, to the point of it feeling like a descendant, possibly a grandchild, of that Tommy Lee Wallace film. There's even a version of the colonial scene that was covered in the last deconstructing video in which Tim Curry's Pennywise was set to make a brief cameo, and not in doll form as we've seen in the trailers. While reading the revision, it felt as if Warner Brothers read the Fukunaga script and said, yeah, that was good, but we need somebody who actually knows the novel and last movie to punch this up. It's clear that they knew the original drafts had stepped too far away from the book, and that fans of the novel would have left the theaters scratching their heads at what they'd just seen. Dauberman returned many of the familiarities of the book to Fukunaga's It, including Bill Denbro's given name, his stutter, the seventh member of the Losers Club, and its shape-shifting abilities, as we see with Eddie encountering the leper. It should also be noted that some of the more overtly sexual aspects of the Fukunaga scripts have been toned down greatly, or, for the most part, outright removed. Beverly's relationship with her father is really the only portion that remains intact, but when viewed in relation to the earlier drafts, it has definitely been scaled back. Some of Fukunaga's creepier lines from Alvin Marsh are still present, but his inappropriate behavior takes a back seat. It could even be argued that Eddie's relationship with his overprotective mother is perhaps more prominent in this script. Dauberman was hired to make a conventional it that horror and King fans would be familiar with, and he did. But at the expense of altering Fukunaga's more daring features, the writing ultimately suffered. Many of the scenes from his rendition remained intact, but with Dauberman changing the dialogue ever so slightly and making it less polished, it's a sloppier draft. The colonial scene which I mentioned before is still in the script, but the interaction has been tweaked as well as the dialogue. While it was genuinely unsettling in the 2015 draft, here, well, it works about as well as that Silver Dollar Saloon scene from the 2014 version. In other words, it doesn't. And it makes sense as to why it was clipped by Muschietti when he was brought on board to direct. Gary Dauberman, who scripted such films as Annabelle and, uh, Swamp Devil, was maybe not the ideal choice to clean up Fukunaga's script. The end product is something that reads like a fanboy revision to mold the screenplay closer to its 1990 counterpart. What's a little more concerning is that there are additions made in this version that are identifiable in the trailers, making it the closest thing we have to a shooting script. One positive thing that I will say about this screenplay is that it helped add heart to Fukunaga's It that had been previously lacking. In comparison to the 2014 version, it is tonally much more on point, and while the 2015 draft had actually given the losers genuine warmth, it still wasn't enough to measure up to this most recent cut. Where things head from here, we can only find out September 8th when it finally comes to theaters. Alright guys, if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more film content coming out of Lower Res Wonder Bread, consider hitting subscribe or funding our channel through Patreon. 
This past week, I discussed the death of unlikable characters in mainstream cinema, or if you can't get enough it and haven't given a look to the previous three parts of this deconstructing series, I recommend you check those out as I dug deeper into the two previous drafts and also Fukunaga's plans and ideas while in pre-production. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next part. Uh?